Good afternoon and welcome to Nebraska Tourism Commission's quarterly industry update webinar. Today we're going to be covering several things, so we're excited to have you with us. It's an action jam-packed full of information deck that we're going to be producing to you all, so uh, we're going to move quickly and we're happy that you're here and that you're able to join us. I'm Kathy McKillop with Nebraska Tourism and with me today is Rich Clausen with Bailey Lowerman. So let's get started. What we're going to cover today is the new imagery and videography that we've been producing with the millennial market, feeder markets and newer marketing outlooks that we're looking at, in-state marketing opportunities, sports marketing as a key market for Nebraska tourism, and recently we were fortunate enough to be able to attend two national conferences, the DMAI, Destination Marketing Association International, and ESTO, the state agency national organization with U.S. Travel Association, and we're going to share some of those key conference takeaways for the industry to also be connected with as well as how the, our industry is moving forward. The Nebraska Nice Radio Shows, very popular, and the 2016 Travel Guides, as in plural. So the VisitNebraska.com 2.0 version. Now, Rich, that's your terminology of saying we're going on the next step there. Cycling in Nebraska, we will have a feature here with our new staff member, Alex Durier, which will be focusing on our trails, which we're very excited to have him on board, and the Nebraska Passport Program, which we will invite Amanda Barker up to speak about, as well as Tourism Cares, and also Lena Karnitz will be up with that as well. And then we will also touch base on the 2015 Tourism Conference. So lots to cover. Let's get going. You bet. Thank you, Kathy. We're going to start with uh, taking a look at some of the imagery and videography that we, uh, that we did this summer. Uh, in traversing the state and capturing all of the nice moments here in Nebraska. Uh, we had a, a group of millennials, we actually had uh, uh, seven millennials, six millennials, pardon me, that, uh, that traveled with us throughout the state and we captured them experiencing nice moments. Uh, this uh, shot was from uh, Halsey National Forest. Um, we uh, went to the Range Cafe in, in Bassett, Nebraska and uh, we, uh, we had uh, we captured uh, the young people having breakfast with one of the locals um, at uh, Niobrara and making sure that uh, uh, we could portage our canoes. Uh, here are three millennials and, and a uh, familiar face of, of a dog uh, that was along the trip with us. Um, camping uh, at uh, uh, Halsey uh, and that uh, scene which was really, really nice. Uh, Toadstool, a uh, geologic park up in Crawford. Uh, which really portrays our uh, state in a, in a great unexpected way. Uh, here the uh, millennials are uh, taking a selfie at Toadstool. And, uh, and then uh, we, uh, one of our final stops was uh, in uh, Fremont uh, where uh, the young people got onto an airboat and uh, were able to uh, go around the Platte River on this airboat and it's, it's quite an experience if you've not done that before so we captured that. Something that's really great about this imagery that we're having and we're releasing with the millennials is the fact that these uh, millennials were between the ages of 18 and 27, a great millennial demographic, usually you can go up to 32 on that, but they had never experienced the activities that they were sharing together. And so to see this organically and to get them to really embrace it is something that demonstrates that there is something out there in our state, lots of somethings out there, that millennials are truly intrigued with and that's what that's what's the most exciting component for me rich is that they really embraced the opportunity and they had a great time and they shared it with so many of their friends so we're very hopeful for this and if you want to know why we're targeting the millennial base well we'd be fools not to because they're our next demographic and so we got to start captivating them and bringing them in and sharing that information and in order to do so there's another component to think about which is the boomers and the families, which we do address and target to as well. But if you're a, a parent of a millennial, which I guess I will share that with, that kind of dates me, doesn't it? But <laughs> I am a parent of a millennial or two. Um, you want to look to things that you can do still with your children. And so it's that generational bridge as well. So millennial parents are also looking at something that, okay, what are you interested in? Let's go do it together. So really cool opportunity. So please continue. You bet. And it's important to note that uh, we're now going to share some videos with you all, and uh, uh, these are not actors. Uh, these are just Nebraska young people that, as you said, Kathy, rightfully so, experiencing all of this for the very first time. And so the, uh, the reactions and the things that you're going to see in these videos this is all very real. 
and uh, really a lot of fun. So we'll we'll play one uh, we'll play one here. What makes a memory? Is it simply what we see and do, or is it more about who we're with? After all, when we really think about it, no matter where we are or what we're doing, the best memories we've ever had, we've shared. So that's a, a two-minute compilation of uh, really everything that they did over the, uh, the seven to eight, nine days that we were out there. And then we, we built uh, experience videos just based on individual um, uh, uh, locations. To us, this is what it's all about. The part of life when we're truly living, when the barriers fall away and we can really be ourselves. A new intriguing experience in a place where we don't have to worry about formalities, or even time itself. Where we can just have fun and be where we were meant to be. Wouldn't that be nice? What's great about these videos is that, as Rich just said, that one was uh, featured at Lake Mac. And again, these do feature outdoor recreational opportunities because we want to show the millennials that um, even though there's a lot of other things, that you can get out during your summer break, your spring break, your fall break, and go explore these avenues. So it's really cool. Yeah. So there are approximately 14 of these, and we're just going to share three of them today, and here's the last one. Everyone's walking a path. Most paths are best walked together. Because when we travel together, our lives are livelier, our journey more enjoyable, and the places we'll discover will be simply spectacular. To be in a place like no other, it unites you all in a state of wonder. Wouldn't that be nice? And I don't think I've ever seen Toadstool look so green. We had we were very <laughs> fortunate to see all that green on top of Toadstool because it really did pop and it was just um, breathtaking. It, it, it really was. And, you know, the reaction that we're getting from all of these videos is, wow, that's in Nebraska? Yeah. That's really nice. So now we're going to just kind of quickly go through what we call feeder market and uh, also Nebraska-based um, uh, marketing opportunities. A feeder market is really a market that anybody can get to Nebraska within, you know, a uh, four, six, eight-hour drive, and uh, and make the make us their their destination destination for a visit. And uh, so, for Nebraska, Rich, that's a, a, a couple ways around our borders, right. as well as will you also hit and touch upon what out of home means? Yes, absolutely. Great. So, so out of home is anything that is. Um, uh, outdoors and so it can be mass transit it can be outdoor billboards um, but anything that's not uh, contained on a screen or on a TV or on a radio 
So feeder markets that we targeted were Minneapolis, Denver, Kansas City, Des Moines, Wichita. We're still in those markets. We want to uh, share with people the, the really nice moments that can be had here in, in Nebraska. And then it's al also equally important that we share the message within Nebraska as well. So we have outdoor and mass transit uh, where available in uh, Omaha and Lincoln, Kearney, McCook, North Platte, Shatteron Alliance. I mean, we're covering the whole state to remind Nebraskans that this is a promise and these are the things that we're sharing with people that we want to have visit the state. Well, and add a note on that is um, some wonder and also maybe sometimes question, and rightfully so, why we would market to Nebraskans in Nebraska. Well, the sim simple fact is, is that we need Nebraskans supporting Nebraska's product. And as you saw in the millennial videos, all of those millennials were Nebraska native born children, but they had never experienced any or all of the activities that they did. Right. So there's a lot of opportunity there that we need more Nebraskans out there sharing and exploring and then inviting their friends and family back to share even more additional memory building. So there is a reason why we still do market in Nebraska. It's about a 70-30 split, which you will share and talk about a little bit later, but it's still very important for Nebraska to be proud about what we have, to share it with your family, your relations, your family reunions, your friends, and to get out there. And absolutely. So the messages that went up uh, in these markets uh, included a lot of this familiar imagery that we've shot that are inviting people to visit Nebraska and visit NICE. And these were billboards that, you know, it was fun to see this billboard in Colorado. <laughs> and uh, I would imagine if you're driving down one of the interstates in Denver uh, to have somebody say, no way, that's Nebraska? You got it? Serious? Um, so we love that. And, uh, and so all of these messages were in every market uh, and uh, both in state and uh, and in the feeder markets. Rich, that last uh, slide that was um, in the Minneapolis market, and recently you had someone say something to you about that. I believe. right. So I I attended the DMAI conference that Kathy referred to earlier, and uh, when somebody saw in my name tag that I was from Nebraska, uh, they came up to me and they they introduced themselves and they said we're from the Minneapolis Convention and Visitors Bureau. And, uh, and I said, oh, really nice to meet you. And, and they said, yeah. They said, we want you out of our market. I'm tired of seeing Visit Nebraska, Visit Nice. You're, you're taking people away from Minneapolis and uh, encouraging them to go to Nebraska. And, and they, were, they were halfway joking because, I mean, they, they understand that, that we need to go in and, and uh, get people to visit them. Uh, to, to visit us just as they come into the Nebraska market and get people to come up and visit Mall of America and, and all the, the fun things that are uh, to be done in the Twin Cities. But, but it's something to be said that the imagery and the efforts are being recognized. So that's, yeah. that's pretty impressive and pretty cool. Absolutely. want to introduce now Dan Cooper who is uh, Interactive Art Director and, and uh, Developer for, uh, for our team at Bailey and for the mm -hmm. Nebraska Tourism Team. And Dan's going to walk you through uh, some of the, uh, the new and exciting things that you're, you may be seeing uh, across the internet uh, on various websites. So Dan, I'll turn it over to you. Perfect. Thank there you, you go, so Dan. much. So quickly we're going to touch base on some of the rich media units that we've recently launched, as well as some homepage takeovers and some banner ads updates that we've been launching as well. So the first thing I want to show you is just this kind of video that we've taken of a 300 by 250 banner ad. So you'll see with the video we start with the uh, familiar campaign imagery, but once I click play, and it actually launches into the animation, you'll see that the banner ad actually kind of brings together uh, the photography that we've created along with what's actually happening on the website, visitnebraska.com. So it kind of connects the website um, and it actually encourages people to visit um, after they see the imagery. So just kind of a way. And the great thing about this is that we can use the same uh, technique for multiple image, images that we've come up with. So we've got this one for Toadstool. And you'll see right away the frame comes around it and shows hey, there's all these amazing, wonderful things to do in Nebraska, find yours today. So kind of a way to bring the campaign imagery to life and kind of connect it even more with the website. And again, kind of targeting those millennials. Um, really cool stuff. Uh, the next thing we're gonna share is just a uh, uh, upcoming homepage takeover that we're doing on the Big Ten Network's website. And basically, you'll see that we are able to take over the background and the margins. And then we also have banner ads at the very top and to the bottom right as well. So just kind of a way to brand uh, their website completely uh, visit Nebraska visit nice for a day really cool opportunity coming up uh, the next thing I wanted to share is a rich media ad and the great thing about this rich media ad is that it's programmed with HTML5 which basically is a newer technology that allows banner ads to run on tablets and desktops that don't support flash anymore 
So just kind of a way to take advantage of some of the newer technology. So with this one, uh, the campaign photography comes up, it kind of fades to red and shows some copy. That fades out and then a button pops up that encourages people to roll over for trip ideas. So once they do roll over, right on the website that they're at, the screen kind of dims and it shows them this larger view. And basically what we've done with this is that we've can uh, combined our video vignettes that we've created for all of our brand photography um, with trips that we feature on our website. And trips on the website are basically collections of things to see and do, places to stay and places to eat. So this one, we created a trip called The Greater Outdoors. And basically this has a video that will play um, involving the Airstream and the couple in this. But when you click View Destinations, it switches to just a list of things to do. And again, this is happening right on the user's web page without even having to go to the Visit Nebraska site. So they kind of get a sampling of things to do without even having to commit to go to that website experience. So just kind of a cool way to bring just a taste of what there is to do in Nebraska to users uh, before they even click on the website. So I'm going to ask Dan to stay up here because we're going to get into the website a little bit more here in just a second. But first of all, we want to talk about uh, some of the activity that we've had with sports marketing. And this is probably a good time to remind everybody that on September 14th, uh, so two weeks from uh, this past Monday, uh, we're going to have a webinar that is talking about sports marketing within the great state of Nebraska and how important that is uh, to local uh, attractions and partners of, of tourism and just to the state in general. So I uh, want to cover just three things that, uh, that recently were, uh, uh, we were able to participate and partner with. The first is the College World Series, which uh, if you talk with the governor of the state of Nebraska, he'll tell you that's one of his favorite things that happens in Nebraska every year. Uh, and we had a, uh, a presence in their program talking about golf in the, in, in the state of Nebraska. And if, you, if you've ever been to the College World Series uh, you, and you see people getting off the plane in, at Epley in Omaha or in Lincoln or uh, Grand Island, they have their golf bags with them and they want to play the great courses in the state of Nebraska. So uh, this was our shout out to uh, the golfing industry and, and the wonderful nice uh, moments that you can have on a course in Nebraska. The second was uh, the World uh, Volleyball Grand Prix, uh, which was in Omaha and uh, it featured three Nebraskans uh, that were on the, uh, the World Cup team for Nebraska, which was, uh, which was really neat. And so every day the World Herald, uh, the Omaha World Herald would run a section that talked about, you know, here are the teams that are playing, here are the scores, et cetera, et cetera. And then we were sponsoring that with uh, the message of nice play. And, uh, and that, that got a lot of uh, smiles going within uh, the arena, uh, as well as uh, from the players themselves. They, they really liked that. And then uh, finally, we, uh, we were able to uh, secure placement in uh, the Wisconsin football program uh, for this fall. And uh, some people may ask, well, gosh, why are we in the Wisconsin football program? Well, the fact of the matter is, is that they're a rival of ours, but that doesn't preclude us from being able to be nice when they visit here. So Wisconsin's, uh, uh, Wisconsin fans are going to be visiting Nebraska this fall. And as competitive as the game will be and as uh, fiery as everybody's going to be, they're still going to have a really nice time. And they're going to be treated with respect, and, uh, uh, which is what we as Nebraskans do. We're known as the greatest fans in college football. And, and so we wanted to remind them that uh, there's a place where you can still experience nice in this world, and you'll find it in Nebraska. Definitely. Thank you so much, Rich. Uh, so I wanted to kind of give an update on the website as well. So our main website is visitnebraska.com. We have some updates and we've got some reporting and then we've got some things that are coming down the pipeline as well. So the first thing I want to do is just kind of go over some stats that we have. And this is since the new website launched last year. So we've had over 230,000 sessions. We've had over 185,000 users, nearly a million page views. The average session duration is 3 minutes and 6 seconds. And that's basically counts how long the average person spends on the website. So having an over three minute engagement period is awesome for a tourism website and we're really proud of that fact. Um, and also 79% of the people coming to the new site are doing so for the first time. So we're getting a lot of new customers. Uh, just some quick stats on where the people are coming from that visit the website. Uh, the top 10 countries of users include the US, Canada, UK, Brazil, India, France, Italy, Australia, and the Netherlands. Uh, the top 10 states of users visiting the site are Nebraska, Minnesota, Illinois, Colorado, Missouri, Iowa, California, 
Texas, Kansas, and New York. And you'll see with those, we have a lot of new uh, states that may not connect to Nebraska, but it's great that we're influencing them as well, which is really cool. Uh, we've had visitors from all 50 states. Uh, and then some interesting facts are that 62.73% of the people that have viewed the website have done so on a desktop, while 25.12% have done so on a mobile device, and 12.16% on a tablet. And that reinforces to us that more and more people are visiting the website on mobile devices, and so that's one of the great reasons why we made sure that the website works really well on a mobile device and a tablet. The next thing I wanted to run through is just some of our analytics from the website, and this kind of breaks in um, for the information that we have, um, some of the age ranges of people visiting the website. So you'll see the first one's 18 to 24. We've got 25 to 34, 35 to 44, 45 to 54, 55 to 64, and 65 plus. And you'll see the tallest one is the 55 to 64, and that's definitely our boomer and uh, probably closer to the family audience, so maybe a little bit down there. But you'll see that definitely reinforces some of our marketing. But you'll see the first one's 18 to 24, which is a growing market of millennials. And that's one of the reasons that we've been doing a lot of uh, marketing to millennials because they're definitely the future of people visiting the state and uh, participating in tourism across the country. So that kind of reinforces some of our points as well. Uh, the next thing is just the gender of people visiting the website. So we have 45.6% male and 54.4% female. Just some interesting facts to go on. Uh, so the next thing I want to talk about is just some updates we've already made to the website since we launched and then talk about uh, a sneak preview of some of the updates we're working on right now. So some of the updates we've already made since the website launched last year is updating the quick search functionality. So that's the search functionality in the top right. Um, in addition to searching the destination name, it now also searches keywords and descriptions. So it lets users uh, type in something like horseback riding and find destinations that have that keyword associated with them. We've also added an FAQ section for people uh, to get answers to questions that are asked frequently. Um, we've allowed events to be added that are citywide or at non-destination addresses. So something that's a citywide event can be added to the website now. We've expanded the search radius so people can find results within a 50 to 100 mile radius of things as well, just to kind of get uh, even more search results. We've added in a separate email newsletter request form, and email marketing is one of the big things we're focusing on right now, so adding a way for people to sign up for that email newsletter right from the website has been very helpful uh, for everybody. We've also added a larger call out at the bottom for requesting the new travel guide, so people can sign up more easily. And we've updated the server specs, or we're working on updating the server specs to handle larger database and more traffic. So the website load speeds are only going to improve in the future. Um, so some of the feedback that we're going to address with the next updates um, are making the event search easier to use. So some of the feedback that we've gotten is that the event search is hard to use, too many clicks to find events for specific dates, or multi-day events don't show up past the first day, and even a desire for a text list instead of a larger image-based view. So you'll see with some of the updates that are coming down in the next few months, we're working to address that feedback. We're also working to address some feedback of users being unsure of what the tag functionality is and its purpose. So we're working on kind of renaming that and making it more obvious to the users what that is. We're also working on creating, um, making creating trips a little bit simpler process so more and more people can participate in that. Uh, we're working on simplifying things and uh, decluttering some of the experiences. We're working on some discrepancies between the mobile and desktop layouts just so that everything is more seamless. And we're working on uh, load speed site-wide, especially on the events section. So you'll see over the next few months as we launch new uh, updates that a lot of these things are going to be addressed. And what we really want to reinforce is that we're definitely listening to your feedback. And we really appreciate all the feedback that you've given. We, we definitely keep track of everything that everybody has said and make sure that we make sure to update the website in the future to address that feedback and make the website even better to use. So launch plans. We're hoping to launch uh, the updates to the Visit Nebraska website in time for the Nebraska Tourism Conference, which is in October. Uh, we're working on a presentation that will be given during the Nebraska Tourism Conference to detail all the updates we've made and how they address all of the feedback we've gotten. We're working again on a walkthrough of how to claim, add, and update destinations to the website. And we're going to encourage industry members and even website users themselves to continue providing feedback so that we can make the website even better. So definitely want to reinforce that we're listening to what everybody's saying, and we definitely are going to make the website an even more enjoyable experience going forward. Thanks, Dan. Thank That's you. great. And we truly are listening because we have scrolls and scrolls of sheets of every comment, positive, negative, in between, suggestions that um, we could all take to the team and take into consideration. So. Uh, we want it to be a great site, and the only way we can do that is together. So if you're having hiccups and hurdles, let us know. 
Also, it's really important to make sure your technology also is up to date because we're operating uh, with a Microsoft with a version that the state sets for us, but if you have programming or technology that's 15 to 20 years old, it's changing so much so fast that it, sometimes that in itself is a big glitch component. So if you have any questions about your technology or how it's interacting with ours or the states or the systems, please feel free to share because you know, I mean, we may have some suggestions of where you can get some updates relatively inexpensively. Definitely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So media reporting, Rich. Yes, um, so we'll go through this pretty quickly, but uh, again, you'll be able to view this uh, in more uh, real time uh, or at more uh, at your leisure uh, by accessing it through the website. So just some top level things, you know, back in, I think it was in February, uh, we had an opportunity to go to Times Square and have uh, the Visit Nebraska Visit Nice message running in Times Square. And uh, that is now uh, completed. So what kind of exposure did Nebraska get in New York City with uh, mil literally millions of visitors to the Big Apple. Well, here's what our reporting uh, shared with us. Uh, our message played over 16,000 times in Times Square. Uh, the, uh, the impressions were over 27 million uh, potential impressions in Times Square. Number of days that it, that it aired, 168 continuous days. We had uh, 98 of these videos that played uh, in Times Square every single day. And the average number of impressions, which is really staggering, 161,000 uh, average impressions per day in New York City. And that's uh, just outstanding uh, coverage for, for our messages. Uh, we also had a, uh, uh, a lot of cable television that played around the country that, uh, that generated leads uh, from travelers that wanted more information about a trip to Nebraska. And so we were on a lot of national cable networks, including Animal Planet, Travel Channel, um, uh, Country Network, uh, Fox News, Bravo, Discovery, Lifetime uh, Movie Network, as well as local stations in those feeder markets. You know, we talked about people that could get to Nebraska within a day's drive. And so everywhere from Bismarck to St. Louis and Minneapolis, Chicago, uh, again, the, the, the message of Visit Nebraska, Visit Nice was in all of those markets. I think one thing to remember that is when we go into such major markets like we talked about and you just mentioned within Times Square, we are really, really pushing the URL. That's the message that's being sent out there is visitnebraska.com. If we have to keep it as simple as possible due to caricatures or limitations, we pump that visitnebraska.com. That's why it's so important to engage your site and attraction, keep it updated and keep it on the website because we are driving all of our our ask and all of our uh, creative to that site. So again, a great value for you as a customer and a partner to utilize our website. Absolutely. If you haven't claimed your destination, do it now. Or help someone or, claim or, it. Or we'll help you claim we'll it. We'll help you That's claim right. it. So one of the, uh, the efforts in terms of national marketing that we were able to tap into, and really it's not even a sponsorship, it, we call it a partnership because the, the Big Ten Network has been terrific to work with and help uh, take the Nebraska message into all of the markets uh, where uh, Big Ten teams are located and nationally as well. And uh, so this past spring, uh, Nebraska Tourism was the title sponsor for all baseball that aired on the Big Ten Network. And we're going to be doing more things during football and basketball as well. But here is really the great thing. I mean, they delivered almost 18 uh, 1.8 million impressions, which was an over-delivery of over a half a million. So they had promised us uh, 1.2 million, and they, they went way above and beyond that. But the great thing about the Big Ten Network is we have uh, fans from all of these other cities, whether it's Columbus, Ohio, or Ann Arbor, Michigan, or just the state of Michigan, the state of Ohio, state of Iowa, the state of Illinois, uh, as far east as, as uh, New Jersey, New York, and, and Maryland, that are coming to Nebraska to watch their teams and uh, uh, compete against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. We want to show them a great time and we want not just to show them a great time in Lincoln and at Memorial Stadium or at Pinnacle Bank, but we want to, we want to encourage them to explore the rest of the state. So while you're here, don't just come for the game or the match, get out and, and discover all the wonderful things that we have in the state. So that's what we use as uh, messaging when we partner with the Big Ten. 
Absolutely. And what's happened with partnering with the Big Ten Network and also on their mobile devices, BTN to go, is that we've seen a spike in our CPI, which is our, uh, you know, a cost per inquiry of who's inquiring about our uh, travel guide and our information. Our number one states used to be California and Texas, but that's not the case anymore. It's really now Illinois. It is also um, Michigan. It's also now Colorado's coming into that when we go into some of those markets. It's not BTN, but we're seeing a lot from Iowa and, and a lot from, um, you know, a lot of those areas, including Minnesota. The reason we were in Texas and California for, those, um, for several years was because those were flight states for us. That's where most Nebraskans that are graduates go to work. Or, and they go there and did the intent of staying for four or five years, and then they don't move home. So they were constantly wanting to know what's going on in Nebraska. These are true people who are trying to plan vacations to come here and we're doing that with a lot of our sports marketing is especially with longer events like the CWS that you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. and next year is a US Olympic swim trial year is that we're putting together half day full days if you got two or three days get out and see more of the state so it's it's been an interesting partnership and it's been one that we've really enjoyed being part of you bet and just a reminder that uh, the webinar on the 14th of September is going to be all about sports marketing and uh, so we'll have uh, couple folks here that will be able to uh, share their expertise and uh, and what they're doing to uh, bring more sports marketing to the state and how locals can take advantage of that right. and, and benefit from it. And we should emphasize that it's amateur sports marketing yes. because these are the events that we are uh, very good at hosting. Yes. Well, as Kathy talked about, uh, there were two events that occurred uh, really within six weeks of each other this summer. The Destination Marketing Association International, which is very CDB based and, and dominated. Um, and so you get a, a really unique and, and I think informative perspective from the folks that, that attend that. And then the U.S. Travel Association's ESTO conference, uh, which was in Portland, um, that followed just about six weeks after that. So there were, there were really five key takeaways that, that our team, uh, and when I say our team, I mean collectively uh, Nebraska Tourism and, and uh, uh, Bailey Larman that we took from the conferences. And Kathy, I'm going to let you kind of take this first one and all right, and, I'm uh, on it. This is um, what the, the great part about going to these um, educational sessions was that one, we can hear about what's going on in the nation and the trends that are circulating out there, where we fit, where we don't fit, where we're doing really well and uh, where we can do better because we can, there's always room for improvement. So when we would go to these sessions, we always debriefed as a team to see where, where it is that that falls into our wheelhouse and what we can do better. The biggest change that it is technology, like we mentioned earlier, we will never ever move slow again in our society. We will never do that because of technology. So you're either on board or you're not. And if you're not on board, you're falling off because uh, you're, you will be left behind. There are no more five-year strategic planning strategy plans, which I get that. I mean, that didn't surprise me too much, but the fact that they're publicly stating don't do a five-year strategy plan. In our industry, we're so fluid, we're so fast moving, uh, technology's driving it, things are changing, that you better be looking at changing your strat plan every two years, which is something that the commission has recently just visited with having a public um, work session and a public comment period on our strategic planning session in July, and we hope to have those results uh, finalized and presented in January of 2016. Uh, transformation um, and disruption is happening everywhere. So you can look at that in several ways. It's a good way. Uh, gone are the ways that are doing things that are comfortable, that you always feel it's easy, it's comfortable. You've got to start thinking big and being um, non-predictable. You've got to be uh, thinking beyond what you believe you're capable of doing and what will get you there and how you want to get there and go there. The idea of working together as a solid team of players and all playing for the same goal and drive visits and revenues for not only your community, Community, but your partners and for your state and the silos are being torn down and we've heard this before but seeing and doing are two different deliverables and you got to believe it with the passion that there are partners everywhere we look and we need to bring them all on board so you know I and I think the really good news here in terms of silos being torn down I you know Nebraskans I think uh, as, as a general rule are very collaborative people right. we like to work together and so this isn't as big of a problem in Nebraska, um, but if there are silos in Nebraska, in other words, where people are just, this is my spot, this is my piece of the pie, I don't want to really help somebody else because it may affect what I get, we don't have a lot of that. But if there is any of that, 
just understand and, and appreciate that the trend is people are working together because we are all in this together. And so I, I think that was something that, that I took away that, you know, that's something we can be grateful for in Nebraska. I think it's a sense of rise above, build above, and do the greater thing, the right thing for the greater good. It's that what's, what is successful in Scotts Bluff is successful for Lincoln. What's successful in Lincoln is successful for Grand Island. We all want everyone to succeed, and when they do, you know, the saying goes, you know, uh, a rising tide floats all boats. So that's, that's what we want, and we're not the only ones sending that message. So a great message to yeah. connect back with. Absolutely. One of the great things about these uh, conferences is that you get to hear speakers that are not in the travel industry or the tourism industry, and they bring fresh thinking that you can apply to your business or your attraction. And one of those was uh, Patty Ross, who's the VP of Connectivity at Nike. I love this. I loved her. She was phenomenal. She was terrific. And, and what she shared is, is basically this thought that the shift in human behavior is that people across the world, regardless of their age or where they're living, that they want to be a part of something bigger. And this should sound familiar because that's what we try and, and uh, emphasize here in Nebraska. And she's saying that we needed to do that, meaning Nike. And so you can drive transformation and disruption and change, but in order to do that, you have to stay connected to those that you want to help transform. And so what she was talking about was the people that they really wanted to help and, and, and make sure that they were connected to necessarily weren't their customers, but were their employees. And so I think that's why it's been super important and I think very admirable that the Nebraska Tourism Commission has webinars like this and outreach like this to share ideas and share trends and share uh, ways that, that we can all get better including ourselves. And so you start small, then you begin to foster change, and then you ignite action. And that's really the, the progression of thinking from Nike's perspective. And I think we can easily adapt that, uh, adopt that here in Nebraska. Yeah, and I, I'm not paying you to say that. You're here on your own today, right, Rich? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. Sure no, that's, that's all good. Just want to make sure that's here. But I couldn't agree with you more because we do need to foster our families within our tourism industry. We are one big family, um, elevating it to the greater good, and we have so many new partners to become associated with and so much good to do. So Amy Anderson was another uh, great, great speaker, and she's from Google, and she was talking about innovation at Google and how they kind of uh, approach it and she was very very candid where she said you know what we've had way more failures than we've had successes but the fact is is that there are innovation principles that guide what we think and how we act and that then deliver success and they're really simple you have a mission that matters so it's something that's easy everybody can understand and you want to make sure that people can get on board you focus on the user for Google, that's whoever is utilizing the products or the services or the platforms that they have. For us, that's focusing on the visitor, the person who's going to be visiting our attractions and our venues and our parts of the state. We want to know as much as we can about what they want to see, how they want to experience things and what they value. And then you launch. And you don't, you don't try and, and make sure that you have the perfect plan. You have the plan. You have the goal. You go out and you do it. And then you iterate. You redo it. And then you do it again, and then you, you make better, and you do it again, and you make better again and again and again. But you always remember that innovation should come from everywhere. Not that it can come from everywhere, but that it should come from everywhere. Especially within the Google organization, it doesn't matter if you're answering a phone, uh, although I don't know how many phones they have, you know, it's <laughs> probably more online. Yeah. But whether you're doing that or whether you're helping to set strategy and business direction for the company, you are expected to innovate and how do we find a better way to do things. So in our industry, not only is our focus the visitor, but this also encourages how much uh, passion and how much we need to appreciate the frontline worker as well as everybody who's part of the team because we need to all be doing it together and finding ways to make it better. So momentum is a terrific thing and this is probably stating the obvious, but you know, a little over a year and a half ago when we launched Visit Nebraska, Visit NICE, um, we saw that there was a little bit of confusion, a little bit of consternation by some people, I mean admittedly. But then as more and more of the work and the expressions and the messaging came out, 
people gravitated to it, and not just in the state of Nebraska, but I think as importantly outside the state of Nebraska, it connected with them. So, you know, the idea about momentum is that you work your butt off to get it, <laughs> and then you have to keep it. And the moment, frankly, that you think you've got it all figured out, and that is the moment when you start to lose it. And so I can just assure you that everybody on this collective team mm -hmm. uh, here today is not satisfied in thinking that we have it all figured out. Every single day we look to get better, each day, every day, every way. And the moment we think we have it all figured out is when we lose it. We don't want to lose it because we've worked collectively as an industry and as tourism staff and commission and, and partners um, to get it. And we want to keep it and grow it. And we always want to look to get better each day, every day, and every way. Very well said. So that's a, a little bit of a summary of what we had for our educational opportunities. We have much, much more information. If you want to talk to any of us one-on-one, -on -one, we're happy to share our notes. Uh, another uh, piece that's doing very well for us right now is the Nebraska Nice Destination Radio Show. And uh, to date, we've had Nebraska on Days, College World Series, Arbor Day Farms, Homestead National Monument, the Nebraska State Fair. We featured state parks such as Lake McConaughey and Lake Ogallala. And we're featuring the Balloon Festival the Balloon Festival and Music event in Scotts Bluff this upcoming Labor Day weekend, as well as Hastings Symphony Orchestra. And we have plenty more shows to do. If you have any ideas or suggestions for a show that you think would make for good listenership, uh, please send them to us and we will have an interview with that entity and see how that could work out. These are pre-recorded and they can be done from a landline, so a lot of opportunity for so many people to participate. You can find this show on Sirius Radio Channel 80 on Saturdays from 11 to 12 Centered Standard Time. Oh, I think Rich was testing me there. 11 to 12 uh, Central Standard Time on Saturday, Sirius Channel 80, the Nebraska Nice Destination Radio Show. So yesterday we had the opportunity to unveil uh, recommendations for the travel guides coming up for 2016. And we did this uh, with first the, uh, the Commission's Marketing Committee and then the full commission. And uh, they loved them. And we want to share them. We're excited to share them with you here today. So first of all, the covers that were approved yesterday at the commission meeting in, at the State Fair in Grand Island. Uh, this is for the spring and summer guide. Uh, this will be uh, very uh, familiar imagery. You've seen some of this before previously on this webinar. Uh, for the fall winter guide, uh, celebrating Nebraska's harvest and uh, uh, really trying to uh, convey these are happy uh, people. Uh, that are in these photos, uh, very genuine, uh, the Nebraskans, and uh, enjoying uh, uh, all that, that Nebraska has. We have a partner with the Travel Guide uh, that uh, has, uh, is Meredith uh, Corporation out of uh, Des Moines that, that publishes uh, a lot of different magazines, from Better Homes and Gardens to Women's Day. Uh, and they, they really, really do these well. They also uh, publish uh, the Michigan uh, Pure Michigan guide. Uh, so they're they're very 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 good at this, and and we've been working with them for designs of what it might look like for the travel guide, and I'm really excited to share those with you today. So, an intro to a particular section. Now these are all very very rough at this point. So don't want you to overjudge uh, photography. You know this specific picture in this specific section. So these are representative, and they're what we call concept layouts. It's um, also not the verbiage content, and it's also, right. this is just to give you an idea, this is just formatting issues only. Exactly. So you'll, you'll see what we call Greek type, which makes no sense, um, but you'll see how, how the guide kind of flows. And so you'll see at the top of this, on the left-hand side of the page, is what we call a pull-out quote, uh, which is a copy, uh, copy from uh, the article or the, uh, uh, the editorial that's going to be in that section. And, and a quote that, that people really, really uh, will find interesting and, and we hope very, very inspiring. And then we also have, if you look over on the, uh, the right-hand side, we have a tweet. And so we're going to be gathering tweets that have uh, actually been tweeted out there uh, by the public. Uh, by the commission. By, yeah. And that we've had responses to. Yeah, so exactly. So it's organic. And so we're searching those now, and we'll pull out the things that, that really put Nebraska in a great light. Um, again, more uh, of a magazine feel and style to this uh, visitor's guide. 
really taking advantage of, of some new photography. Uh, there will be even sections that have a full, what we call a double truck or a double page spread of just a photo with nothing else on it. And that's a, a very popular uh, design cue and, and something that we want to explore more of. Um, and you can see uh, that's my hometown, North Platte. I like that. Um, so the listings, we've, we've talked about we're going to have listings in uh, both of the guides. And again, a reminder that if you're in uh, and you have an ad in uh, the Nebraska guides, uh, you, you're in both guides. It's not just spring and summer and then fall winter. If you're in one, you're in both. And you can switch up your ad. So if you have an ad that you'd like to uh, emphasize a little bit more of the summer activity and spring activity, and you want to change that up for fall winter, you can do it, no that, problem. That's an amazing opportunity and a great deal. So if you still are thinking about it and don't know what the impact is for the travel guide, well, we, the numbers are amazingly high of what it's going to be, and Meredith, with their touch, is going to really enhance it. So you can still have the insertion orders and still do that. This is also um, the category that we heard a little bit of feedback on when we first proposed right. the guides. So we really took it to heart to look at how this section could look. And we also presented three different section options to the marketing committee of the commission and then the full commission yesterday. And this was what they wanted to go with. And again, if you populated the website by August 3rd, you're in the listings. You're in the listings and you're in the listings with what you populated. So. We're going to have, uh, this is going to be, I think, real easy for, mm -hmm. uh, for a visitor uh, to be able to access. We're going to do this literally by alpha, meaning by, by community. So uh, if you're in Alma, uh, you'll be uh, at the front okay. of the listings. And if you're you'll in New York, yeah, you'll if you're in, in New wise. York, you'll be in the Ys. But um, everything is going to be contained. And, and, and really, this is neat because we're not limiting a word count here per se. So if you have on your attraction, your destination, you have everything from we are pet friendly for our hotel or we, uh, we're all no, non-smoking or we have vegan uh, uh, entrees in our uh, restaurant, that specificity is going to play right into this. And then there will be icons that will be at the end of each of the uh, uh, of attractions or the venues or the hotels, motels that will show uh, this place is an attraction, this place has food, uh, this place is a place to stay, um, and it's, it's really going to be, I think, nice. And again, this is exactly the verbiage that was posted on our website. So this is what the destination or the attraction or the entity submitted. That's what's going in on the listings. We can't change that now. That's why the deadline was August 3rd. But let's give a shout out in Ainsworth to Big John's Restaurant, which is going to read in the listings as 1110 East 4th Street, a small restaurant with amazing food and great service, owned by John Steck, specializing in... Buffets, burgers, and sandwiches, 402-387-0500, and the icons of food and other options that are there. So the, the visitor's really going to get some information that they need, as well as also go to the website and get more information when they go back to, to our website. But what was in the um, listings information is what, we, was what we're using. Exactly. Okay. Great. Thank you, Rich. So with that, we're going to turn it over now to some other staffers, Kathy. Yes. Quickly moving on for the sake of time, and I want to take this moment right now that if you have any questions, I know we're going through a lot of information today, please send your questions to amanda.barker at nebraska.gov. I'm going to say that again, amanda.barker at nebraska.gov. All right. Uh, joining me now is Lisa and Alex, and I'd like them each to quickly um, introduce themselves as we move on to our tourism first Fridays of um, activities. Alex, we'll, uh, welcome aboard and will you just introduce yourself to our listeners here, our viewers. Yeah. Uh, my name is Alex Duryea. I'm the, the, I'm the ecotourism consultant for the Nebraska Tourism Commission and uh, give me a call if you have any questions about ecotourism and uh, whatnot and I can help you out. We're going to hear a little bit more from Alex in a minute. Right now we're turning it over to Lisa. Hi and I'm Lisa Carnatz. I'm the small business consultant for Nebraska Tourism. And my first event I want to tell you about is the First Friday event. It's a brand new event hosted by Nebraska Tourism in the State Office Building. It is more of a local event and what we do is a two hour um, open house type of farmer's market that we are putting on. We are showcasing Nebraska products. 
We have Nebraska destinations, Nebraska industry, um, products, retail stores who make food, produce, and we bring them in. And we also have a band. And this is our flyer that we advertise. We advertise in the downtown area around the state office buildings. We've had one first Friday already. Friday, this next Friday will be our second Friday. It's a lot of Fridays. <laughs> But our first Friday, we felt very good. It was received very well. We're looking forward to this next one. We have another band. We have more people who have inquired about it. What was really fun about the last one we had, when people walked out the front door, everybody, when the minute they saw the band, they had a smile on their face. And for the people here to know that this is all from Nebraska, for Nebraska, and we're here for you, it was a very fun event. What's great about these events, Lisa, and you're doing a fabulous job, is that we started out with the passport stops and offered it out to them as an additional bonus of doing all the hard work they've done this summer if they wanted to bring their product down or send a representative. And we had several of them take us up on that. And I see this growing and growing. I'm really excited to see in the first Friday in December because what a great way to do some holiday shopping and get some exposure like this. So all the bands are local. They're Nebraskans. And this group right here was the Wildwoods, which was a folk slash kind of country, a very eclectic sound, and these young adults or millennials did a fantastic job, so well done. Yes, it was lots of fun. The other thing I wanted to talk about um, is a little bit about the business aspect for what I am working on right now for the conference. I'm working on a resource packet which will have financial funding information in it, and there is a lot of information, and so I'm organizing it so that it would best fit for you as a, a business looking for financial resources in your area or in a particular if you want a guaranteed loan or if you want a grant I'm separating it into different categories and there is a lot of information and so you may want to ask your local economic development person if they have responded to my request for information so that I have all the information that is available for you for financial resources in your area the other thing I'll be doing is working with the districts and the regions across the state, and so a lot of the things that I'll be working on will go hand in hand, and we'll be tying mm -hmm. tourism into a lot of their project projects. And so if you have something that coordinates that will tailor toward your tourism as far as overlap into your business, into your economic development, um, I would love to help you with whatever project you're working on. A great thing that Lisa's also doing is that it's new for the commission, but we need you to help us and Lisa with this project is kind of like a business transition succession project. We work very closely with the University of Nebraska at Lincoln with their hospitality, tourism, and hotel management program. And what we're seeing is there's a lot of millennials and young adults or families that are interested in maybe buying a small business, starting a small business, operating a B&B. &B. So we want to collectively be the conduit and gather that information so that when someone says, well, I would really be looking for this transition, we know that those opportunities are out there so we can get people to get out and, and repopulate and support um, Greater Nebraska. So if you know of b and or um, bar, uh, locals, entities, or anything like that that are ready for that, um, please share that with us. We're going to move quickly now into cycling in Nebraska. And with that, we have Alex um, coming on. And Alex, take it away. Okay. Uh, so I just want to share a couple quick facts for you. Uh, in the United States, $133 billion is devoted to, or goes to the U.S. economy through cycling. Um, and now that's, that's including cycling tourism, cycling sales, uh, service, all that good stuff as well. Uh, so it's a massive part of our economy and it's something that Nebraska can definitely uh, tap into. So just south of us is the Missouri's Katy Trail. Uh, their economic impact is measured at $18 million per year with roughly 400,000 visitors. Now compare that to Nebraska's Cowboy Trail, which doesn't have that yet, but it has the potential of becoming that. So that's something I want to work on in the future here, and I'm going to have a uh, tour here coming up on uh, September 25th through the 27th on the Cowboy Trail. Contact me if you would like some more info, if you're interested, um, but give me a call and let me know if you're interested in coming. Um, and I just want to share with you a couple things that uh, you as a business can do to help cater to cycling tourists. Uh, service with a smile. I know, I know it's uh, something as simple as that can really go a long way, honestly. Um, cyclists love being greeted with a smile at the front door, and uh, it really, really does go a long way. Uh, offer and advertise cycling-related amenities. This includes snacks, water, 
free Wi-Fi, a place to kind of park their bike, uh, charging stations for cell phones and whatnot, because they love sharing on social media places that they're going and where they have been. Uh, it's also a good advertising opportunity for you uh, if you leave a good impression with them. Uh, restrooms and bike pumps, uh, just to fill up tires as, as they're going on their way. Um, so again, that Cowboy Trail Tour is coming up on the 25th to the 27th. Contact me if you're interested in, in participating. Uh, Pathless Pedal is an excellent website for more uh, information on how to be uh, how to cater towards cyclists if you're a business. A um, couple programs we'll be working on here is going to be the Scenic Bikeways in Nebraska, and then also building a bicycle-friendly uh, business program for you guys to be able to participate in. Uh, another upcoming event is going to be the 2017 Solar Eclipse, uh, which will be on August 21st in two years. So where will you be? Several question. communities are already working yes. on that. And Alex yeah. is our contact person, so feel free to share your thoughts so that we can have a, a complete package together to celebrate that event on August 21st, 2017. It's never too early to plan. Yep. Um, here's Alex's information. Thank you so much for coming on board. And right now we're going to quickly go through the media tours and public relations. And we're also going to go over the Tourism Cares program with the few minutes that we have left. And uh, Rich, we're going to go quick, so I hope you're ready. Oh, gosh. It's speed bullet time here. Here we go. So there was a, uh, a Western Nebraska media tour that we want to share with you, a video that Channel 7 in Omaha, which is the top station in our state in terms of viewership, is, uh, um, what's that? I think that the video would be a great opportunity for the viewers to go back into this once it posts and view it. Okay, well great, we can do that. No worries. It's really cool though. Alright, talk about the Okay, Bridges talk project. me into it. Go ahead, play it. We might run just slightly long, so be patient everyone. This is really cool. Something to be proud of. clear water bubble up from the Ogallala Aquifer, many visitors understand why Pete Camille was so concerned about the original plans from the Del Sol Pipeline route. The road comes just 25 miles from their property. They go, yeah, this is special. As well as the people who live here. It's what connects us to the generations before us and the generations of our families that will come after us. Mayor of Rural Nebraska, Andrew Ogassi, KETV, New Ross Center. Well, you're right, Rich. That's a great video. It really is a great Wasn't video. Wasn't that worth yes, watching? Yes, yes, it's that was worth awesome. the time, and we'll probably see it again and again because it really says uh, and speaks volumes of what our industry and the impact it has yeah. and can have across the state. So, on with the Bridges Project. 
This is a project that the Nebraska Tourism Commission and the State Historical Society are sponsoring, and it is a photography call. If you haven't already heard the news, it's with the Hildegard Center for the Arts. It kicked off on June 1st and will conclude January 4th, 2016. So you have plenty of time to get out there and get some shots and imagery captured this fall, through the winter, right now, State Fair. And then it's going to serve as a bridge to connect Nebraskans with their culture and their heritage. And this call or this project is intended to highlight historic places that are often overlooked or forgotten about and are historical treasures in all 93 counties. So everyone should be out there taking some special images for us and submitting these for these opportunities. Photos are submitted with a narrative that describes how the focus of the photos and bridges the past with the present and then will be selected by a jury of noted photographers. So that's really an exciting opportunity to get everybody involved. And these photos will be featured in a statewide traveling exhibit that coincides with Nebraska sesquicentennial in 2017. And they may even appear in some of Nebraska tourism's travel guides, posters, and promotional um, events throughout the state that we utilize as well. And they will be um, captured in a digital catalog. That's really so impressive. It's that cool. You, that's impressive that you could say sesquicentennial. Sesquicentennial, sesquicentennial, yeah. sesquicentennial. Yeah. Moving on. It is corporate relations, including the 2015 Nebraska Passport Program. And here's some of our partners in our corporate relationship um, family right now. Amazing partners that we have. We're very proud to be working with all of them. And more importantly, it's we're just honored that they see value in Nebraska tourism and share their love and passion for Nebraska and want to partner with us. So give a shout out to any of these in your local areas. Um, in addition, we're going to move on and talk about the Nebraska Passport Program. And that is Amanda Barker. Welcome, Amanda. And um, she is our staff person assigned to the Passport Program, so Amanda, have at it. You bet. Thank you. Um, well, one thing we always want to give you an update on is the 2015 Nebraska Passport Program. Um, it's been excellent so far. I really haven't heard a negative word about the program in all of my travels um, visiting with these Nebraska Passport stops. I think to kind of harken back to one thing Kathy and Rich said earlier is that getting Nebraskans out of their own hometown and into the greater Nebraska is one of the best things about the Nebraska Passport Program. We're essentially creating brand ambassadors uh, with Nebraskans themselves. Um, so you'll see a lot of the stats here. I think the notable ones to, to note is that there have been um, nearly 20,000 uh, passport booklets in circulation and nearly 20,000 stamps. So they're, they're making a lot of stops. Um, we've had travelers from a lot of states, nearly half, we're getting there. Um, for the first time we've had New Jersey, South Carolina, Florida, which is interesting. Um, so far 26 travelers have completed on all 80 stops and again something notable not on this screen is that travelers have represented 123 Nebraska communities. So it's not just Omaha and Lincoln that are getting out there. I mean, it's it's people from all over Nebraska, which has been fantastic. I love this number, 26 travelers so far. The yes. program still goes till September 30th, have hit all 80 stops. And that is amazing. That is like quite quadruple yeah. from last year. I mean, they're really knocking it out of the park. Yeah. And the most popular stops, well, who wouldn't love Baker's right. uh, Chocolates and Candies in Greenwood, the, the infamous and famous Denny Moore Sandwich in Nebraska City, and Dundee Dell in Omaha. But this is not to say there's a lot of popular tours and other right. stops. These are the, the most popular ones right now. And my goal is to have 5,000 downloads by the end of the program. Okay. We're not quite there yet, but so we can close. do it. We can do it. So if you can use your Droid or your yeah. um, iPhone to download the app and even get one stamp, I sure would appreciate it. I think that'd be a great goal to hit. Do it for Kathy. Do it for us. <laughs> do um, it for Nebraska. Yeah, do it, do it for, for Nebraska. Nebraska. Good call. It's better, better call. Do it for Nebraska. Um, one other thing we're very excited to debut here a little bit is the Nebraska Tourism Cares Program. So this is a brand new program um, that will begin in terms of the, the service element of it in April of 2016, but we want to get you thinking about it today and through the Nebraska Tourism Conference in October. So essentially what it is is um, a service opportunity where we aim to preserve and enrich the travel experience for future generations by protecting and restoring destinations throughout Nebraska. Uh, the basics is that we will coordinate four service projects annually, um, with each service project being a two-day event. So we'll uh, gather up volunteers and take them to a community wherein we need to, to protect or restore a t travel or tourism destination. So to be involved in this, which we hope you'll all consider, uh, to be a service site, to be the place where you welcome volunteers and, and collaborate on a, on a service project, 
Those will be distributed for the first time at the Nebraska Tourism Conference in October in Columbus. So the, the deadline for that application is December 15th. We want to make sure that we've got all of our ducks in a row so that come April of 2016, we've got everything perfectly organized and coordinated. Um, if you want to be a volunteer, again, something we hope you'll consider. It's a, a really rewarding thing. Uh, those will be released in January of 2016 when we have decided on the, the very first site. Uh, and that will be done via the NebTour listserv and, and other avenues, so keep your eyes and ears out. Uh, but really, this, is, this will be a tremendous thing for uh, Nebraska and the tourism industry within Nebraska. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. At my contact information is, is listed right there. So. I'm excited about kicking this off. I think this is so cool for our industry to give back and be philanthropic and we're already passionate, we know that about our state, but this is a way for us to really demonstrate that passion. And this is a great thing that millennials like to grab into as Absolutely. well. They love to participate in something like this and then they love to share it on social media. So uh, really be thinking about this. We don't know how many applications. We're, this is the first time we're doing it. It's kind of a pilot. We hope it goes well. Um, we're excited to announce the selections in January, as well as you know of a volunteer group. And so, uh, again, Amanda's uh, going to take the lead on this, and we're just really excited to be a part of the industry and give something back as well. So, yeah. how exciting! I know. How exciting! It'll be great. So, moving on, um, as Amanda said, this is going to be released at the Tourism Conference in uh, 2015 in Columbus. And so that's a quick time for us to put in another plug. I can't shout out enough about how great some of our speakers are that are coming. Wow, they are amazing. And so please don't miss out. And please share it with other coworkers or other colleagues that may not even be in the industry that you think would benefit. Family members. Some of the speakers are about personal growth. Some of them are about the power of NICE. And that is the theme this year. So we're very excited. Regist registration forms and payment are due by October 13th. You can learn out more about the content, the speakers, if you go to our website and visit the uh, media industry page. And there's the link right there. We'd love to see you in Columbus. The theme is The Power of Nice, and it is October 20th through the 22nd. At this time, that wraps up everything, and we're looking to see if there's any questions or comments that we could field from the group or the audience or the viewers. And Amanda, did you have any that came in? I got two questions. Excellent. Um, one was regarding the Big Ten takeover of the website. Mm -hmm. When will that takeover be digitally? Do you know? We will check on that and get back. It should be soon. Excellent. We'll definitely follow up. And Excellent. Never, okay, know. so that will be followed up on. Yep. So, um, Dan, let, share with us how will that be followed up on. The question is the Big Ten Network, Network takeover, website. The, the digital takeover yes. that you showed us. Yes. Can fantastic. you please share that? Definitely. Okay. We will follow up. Uh, we will post on either the meet, uh, the industry section or the press room section of the Visit Nebraska website. Excellent. You can post with uh, more information on that. And we'll probably announce it. Via yeah, web so, tour, yeah, yeah, a yep. Nep tour. We'll, we'll yep. announce it via Nep tour. So thank you for that question. Excellent. I don't know where the question came from, but we will uh, make that announcement on Nep tour. So as always, watch Nep tour. I know that we try not to send out a lot of information, a lot of emails, because it gets everybody all like, oh my gosh, I got so many today. But if you get a Nep tour email, it's probably something you want to at least take a pop, pop it open and take a look at real quick. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next one came from a passport destination, and they had asked the Nebraska Nice Destination Radio Show yes. if that was recorded and distributed anywhere. Is it, it podcasted? It is. It okay. is. It, so it's not podcasted. Okay. It's carried um, nationally on Sirius uh, Radio Sirius. Channel 80, but we have them all recorded on our website. Okay. So um, they can reach out to Angela Backer. Mm -hmm. uh, Angela White. You're Angela White. <laughs> Oh, these all these all these nice new names. fun family members. Angela White, Angela dot White at Nebraska .gov. She has those stored and located. Okay. If there's one that you want to, or all of them, you want to review again. From. Sure, review or share. Right, uh, exactly. Right. Of course. Great. That was Any it. other questions? That's all I got. Fantastic. We want to thank everybody. We want to thank Alex and Lisa for joining us today. And again, a lot of information and content that was shared with you. So please, we will store this on our website. Go back and review it. Email us. Reach out to us. Share your comments and concerns, suggestions, innovations, and ideas. Because together, you know, we're better. And, uh, you know, a rising tide floats all boats. So have a wonderful holiday weekend. Safe travels, everyone.